is shit! <laughs> Do you think he's dead, sir? Hopefully. Good day to you, madam. Announce me. Uh, this is Sir Nigel Winston Handbasket the first. Also, the only man you will probably ever meet um, in your whole life who considers considers pig swill to be roasted duck with a raspberry glaze. <sighs> She'll be back soon. I think your perception of soon, sir, is a lot longer than mine. No one likes a smart ass, Geoffrey. Maybe you misunderstood our situation. Spare some change. Well, I should give you anything. I mean, what would you spend it on? A machine gun so I can massacre anyone who dare stands in my way. And I'm appointed Emperor of the Planet. I mean plums, lots of plums. Oh. Please, spare some change. No. Oh. What are you going to do now, sir? Well, ring the doorbell. Oh. Oh. Are you uh, going to ring the bell again, sir? Fuck no! And how do you intend to rob people of their house full of possessions, sir? I suppose you brought a gun. No, I don't have a gun. But I do have this! <laughs> you never cease to amaze me, sir. How long does it take women to get from the kitchen to the front door? I'm afraid I have no idea, sir. Oh, my mate. How long was that? Ten seconds, sir. Excellent. Would you like a peanut and butter Kit Kat? Oh dear. Then, when Mrs. Three opens the door, you hit her with this hammer. Understand? Forgive me, sir, but I don't particularly want to kill anything. That's a very old man, you. I'm Nigel Wint, Terry Wogan. Now, may we enter your house and steal your, uh, uh, I mean, move your piano? You really are the stupidest, craziest specs of little class steel I've ever seen. Don't talk about my butler like that. Thank you, sir. Speak when you are spoken to. Ooh. That does it. I was willing to let you play with explosives in my fucking front garden. That, and not anymore. I'm now going to call the police. more pissed off than the man who's come home from a hard work at a concentration camp to find that his cat has done a shit on his last slice of cheesecake. And his wife is in bed with a rhinoceros. Perhaps you should take a nice refreshing bath instead of stealing sarcastic cynical quips from Blackadder. Sod off. Go on. Sod off. Get to soldiery. I've got it. Shall I set your pubic hair on fire, sir? Now, sir, don't make me put you in the straitjacket again. And by straitjacket, I mean that man Keeney. I can see it now. An army of the most vicious tossers ever assembled outside the Big Brother house. An army led by Chuck Norris. <laughs> no, scrap that idea, actually. Uh, actually, sir, I found the idea rather intriguing. Except the bit about... <laughs> Never fear, Jeffy. I have complete confidence in us. And yet, I have confidence in myself because I know that I have confidence in myself because I have confidence in myself. And you have confidence in me. And other people who see us on the streets will say, he looks like he has confidence. We must worship him. And that's what gives me confidence. Well, that doesn't give me any confidence. Shut up. Uh, 
permission to interrupt you, sir. What, Jeffrey? Can't you see this plot's hard enough to follow as it is? You're like a dead pelican. Jeffrey, I've got it. What have you got, sir? AIDS. I'm not joking. Allow me to introduce you to you the bona fide remains of what was once a great old hat stand. A strange wreck of a rifle range target, and the only man I know who reads poetry while fishing in a sewer. Nigel Whitston Handbasket. Hello. Come on. We have nothing to lose, but that does not mean we have nothing to gain. Thank you for that shit speech, Jeffrey. Thank you for such tasteful criticism, sir. You crawler. That's right, you heard. Now, which one of you will talk first? You, Dickface McGee. So they call me Velociraptor. I was born inside the fires of Mount in its dying moments, and then I was turned into a mess of sandwich that was made out of jealousy, jelly, and other things so I think of J, because the letter J itself, the originator of it, also half of Glassjaw were involved. However, the other half weren't, because they were just lazy, really. Um, yes, I am 94 years old. I was never born. Um, born was me, though, and I... I generally think I'm wasting my time here, but I have no choice in it because my mum told me to do this and then she hit me with yellow pages. And because it, it's quite like, it's quite heavy actually, isn't it? It's got a lot of pages, it can help you go up there. I mean, so like, it, it was very tempting to come here, so I came here and I had nothing else to do anyway. So yeah, I'm the Velociraptor and I'm not real. How many answers in Tosser? Good evening, boys and girls. I am Mr. Oh, Lupin. Mmm, yes. How do you spell Mr? You may all be just known that my crust in Timberlake boxes are around so far up my arse I can no longer feel my finger downs. Also, my penis has reached a staggering 17 feet long. Yes, that's right. Feet, not inches. I'm now a danger to mankind. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ivy and I'm not a serial killer. Excuse me, sir. That man has a rather high voice. I believe that man is of the opposite gender, sir. I don't want to know about the gender, you dirty fool. What sex it is? Female. Oh. Right, lads, here's the plan. We all know what we're going to do. We're going to rob a house of all its possessions. And then we'll sell them. So that I, I mean, like we, will become rich and powerful. Any questions? Harry, bro, is no longer legal in Hungary. I don't have any questions that actually make some goddamn sense. Go burn yourself. Uh, I have a question. What kind of cut are we getting from this? Jeffrey, come here, then. I thought I said not to have any emos into the house. It's probably better than the sofa now. Pardon me, sir, but I believe our friend is referring to a cut of the profits from the heist. Yes, what do we get in return for helping you? You all get a hearty handshake personally from me. And a mention in my autobiography. Click on the task could be Terry McGee's alphabet book. You expect us to rob a house in broad daylight and you don't intend to pay us? You crazy fucking son of a bitch. Don't let him call me that and get away with it, Jeffrey. You drag us out here to this large, expensive looking house to do dishonest job for dishonest wages. I think you're slightly confused. You're not getting any wages. I'm going to cut open your head with an axe, take up the tiny little pea you have for a brain, and step on it. I anticipated this, so I brought precautions. Say hello to my little friend. Ha! Not so tough now, are you? With your disturbing yet humorous insults, I'm calling you names and to bleed. I spent all the money I had in the world on this, and it isn't even real. Let's see. Something tasty. Something moderately healthy. Ah, fruit salad. That's it. Everyone likes a bit of fruit salad. Now I need, uh, carrots or cucumber. I must apologise to my employer. His condition is caused by stress, depression, no hygiene, and the fact that he's clearly retired. Look, never mind your posh chatter, G3. Are you going to see that we get some sort of payment out of this? Because if not, then I'm going to nail your dumbass box head to a wall and then walk away. And then I'm going to rape him. I want a rooftop made of baked beans! Okay. All I want is a 20 pence coin. 
and a cheque for a million pounds. Jeffrey, the fruit salad's on fire! Excuse me for one moment. It was the day of the robbery. Everyone was looking forward to using their skills of breaking and entering. The narrator? Damn narrators! I'll send them all to hell! Do you know how I keep my butt so fun? Apricots! You had? Now that the hour of the robbery is upon us, I feel I must have speaks with you about the sanity level of some of the recruits. Well, you know what they say, Geoffrey. What? Do they? What? My mistake. We shall be using these Simpson character toys to represent each of us. I like to be represented by my uncle Derek! Shut, Shut up. up! Lupin will sneak across the Mrs. Street house and then pick the lock on the door using this paper clip. We have no idea how this works, but we've seen it done in tons of films, so I'm sure you'll figure it out. Roger Moore got arrested for brushing his teeth with a pancake and running on a ghost train. Oh, hello there, everybody. We're just, uh, we're just playing a game of, um... Snap! Snap! <laughs> uh, oh, oh, come on, no one thought that was funny. The coast is clear. What does that matter? The coast is 20 miles away from here. Who the fuck is that? God. Damn him! Mark my words, Jeffrey. As soon as I rise to power, I'll take a rocket ship to heaven, creep up in the pearly gates, ring the doorbell, and run! A master stroke of ingenuity and spare bicycle parts. Just because I've never worn anything in my life before. It can sometimes affect a person's sense of ethics and morals. Not to mention the legal binding of matches. At first I was a bit cross, but I've had time to think of the pros and cons of winning and losing. I'm firmly content with not knowing. Anyway, pay attention everybody. Seriously, nobody thought that snap thing was funny? To tell you the truth, sir, when I heard you say snap, the first thing I thought was, that's not funny. Anyway, so the plan of attack everybody. You'll be using these binoculars. Oh, thank you, sir. And when Lupin managed to open the door, I should let you know by bending my platics. That sounds painful. It will be. Any questions? Yes, sir. If you're giving the binoculars to me, then how are you going to see when Lupin gets inside? I'll use these. Bloody hell. You can't wear them. They're not prescribed for you. Nonsense. I just need to get used to them. Oh, I think I'm going to pass out. Before we head off, I promise you all a surprise. Is it a bomb mom my chocolate with Piccadilly dipping sauce? No, well, that's not a bad idea. Remind me to consider it after the robbery, Geoffrey. Very well, sir. The surprise is our very own disguise. Cool. Excuse me, sir, but those disguises aren't those plastic Sainsbury's bags I saw you tying around your neck so you could pretend to be Superman. Oh, gracious, no. That was only the prototype. Besides, anyway, I was trying to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. He does on his day off. Now, I want you to model our disguises, Ivy. You're a girl, so I assume you like that sort of stuff. Sexist. Alright then, if you don't want to be our model. I didn't say that. Well, don't look. Okay, you can look now. Ta da! What do you say to that? If I hand in my resignation now, will you give me a good reference on my CV? What do you mean? I think it's an excellent disguise. There is one tiny problem with your disguise. Can you guess what it is? I see what you mean. We can't use this one box between five heads. From time to time in this great island's history, it falls down to one man to lead his people out of the valley Wait. of shadows. Hang on, let's just get this over with. Noise Squad starts in 20 minutes. What the fuck are you 
you've got a track in for. We're here to move the piano. No, no sir, we, we've done that bit already. Oh, um, we're here to steal all your items. I've not seen you before. Oh, yes, I remember. This is my twin brother. We were orphaned as children, never seen each other since. Oh, that's original. Oh, knock me down. Gladly. He took it literally. You bastards. Look, can't you keep your voice down? We've got a lot of work to do here. You bastards! We need something to make sure he keeps his mouth shut. Ivy, see if there's any prick stick. Uh, I was thinking, why don't we try one of those ball gags with the cell thing? Don't be so revolting, Jeffrey. She probably does things to herself while she's thinking about the things she said she thought about. She's a girl, Jeffrey. She can't masturbate. I'm seeing valuables and hoovering. Who's going to stop me? Angelina Jolie. I like to see that. What time is it? Where's your watch? I don't have a fucking watch. You swapped it for a Caramac bar last year, remember? Well, it was worth losing that old family heirloom just to find out whether I still dislike Caramac bars. Let's go! You won't get away with this, you scum. If I ever find you, I'll bite your fucking arms off. Almost forgot. Jeffrey, give that man a receipt. A what? A receipt. Afternoon. Ha <laughs> ha! Money! Lovely money. It's all the rage. Quiet, you rich ridden steamer. Don't forget, sir, we have to pawn this stuff before we can make a profit. How dare you use such foul language in front of your superior? I said pawn, not porn. You filthy swine! Don't keep worrying, Jeffrey. You only end up doing yourself more harm. <laughs> oh! Why don't you be more careful? I've been thinking. Good. By the end of this week, I'll be crowned Emperor of the Universe. So I must come up with some kind of salute for my subjects to give me. Sign of respect. How about thrusting two fingers in your general direction? So what do you think of this? I don't think that one's particularly appealing, sir. What do you mean? It was very popular in the 1930s and 40s. I feel like he's a little tweaking. You mean like this? This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. I'm choosing to think of this more as a catastrophic disaster. I don't want to go to prison. Someone might make me their bitch. And I'll be sexually assaulted because I'm someone's bitch. My uncle ended up in prison. What does that have to do with anything? Oh. Did he give you any advice? Yes. Don't drop the soap. Uh. Oh, cheer up, sir. You won't be sent to prison. You can plead insanity and get a nice, comfy, padded cell. But then I have to prove I'm insane. How do I do that? Well, that depends. Are you planning to make a statement during the trial? Of course. In that case, you'll be tied up in a straitjacket before the judge bangs his gavel. He bangs his gavel, eh? Damn it, Jeffrey, we need to think of a way to get out of this. You could always try giving back the stolen items to Mrs. Fitzsimmons' son and then apologising. Wash your mouth out with cement. I never apologise to anyone. Even me? Especially you. Now, think of a way to get me out of this, you lesbian. Well, then, I fear the only logical option is for us to get as far away from here as possible, taking the stolen items with us, so that we can sell them at some sort of car boot sale. Well done, Geoffrey. I thought up that plan ages ago. Just seeing how long it took you to come up with it, too. They've probably already forgotten your promise. Yes, but I don't know that they've probably forgotten. No, they probably have. Yes, they've probably forgotten, but we can't certainly know that. They've probably certainly forgotten your promise. Yes, but although they probably certainly have forgotten my promise, you can't be certain that although they probably certainly have, there's no probability that they certainly haven't. Are you on drugs? Can I have some? That's what I like about you, Geoffrey. You have too much and no class at the same time. Don't you have confidence in me? Of course I do, sir. I just don't trust you, that's all. 
Bully pork isn't a word. Oh, what would you know, you hobo? It's not a word. Ah, they're destroying our village. What? Shut up, MC Frodo. I've been ping pong champion for 17 years. I think I have the right to wear tits around my bollocks. Ivy didn't know what to make of the Lupin's insane ramblings. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lord Voldemort was gathering an army. Another narrator! <sighs> stay calm, stay calm, just think about that scone. <sighs> you mean that scone that was wrapped in clean film and left by the oven for a couple of days? That's right, isn't it dreamy? I'm afraid to tell you, but the thing is, we kind of devoured slash om nom nom did. You ate my scone. We both had half and half. It was sort of like a little reward for like completing the mission successfully. Did you enjoy it? I put butter and chocolate spread on my slice. I put brown sauce on mine. So you both ate my scone? My scone? Do you realise how long I've been waiting to eat that? I haven't had one in years. Just the thought of taking a bite out of it and savouring the crumbly, raisin scented taste got me through the day. And now you're sitting there, looking like Shaggy from Scooby Doo, and you have the nerve to tell me you enjoyed it. Did you at least choke on a bit of it? New. How about you, shit stain? I didn't eat your scum, you reverent slag. You didn't? However, I did like that scum I found. Where's Ivy? Who cares? Frankly, the farther away that psychotic weirdo is from us, the better. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, hello, Ivy. Uh, what a pleasure it is to see you at this precise moment. We're going to pay. <laughs> I like to sing a special song that I wrote while on the toilet earlier. Do we have to listen to it? Yeah. Then just skip to the chorus. To me, I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. About ice cream. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes about Morse code. Get on with it! Yes, get on with it! Kiwi fruits and a limited supply of kiwi fruits. You see, by telling little white lies, great things can be achieved. Now, we'd be liars if we said we never told a lie, wouldn't we, sir? Oh, what, sir? I'm oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Did you say we're not going to pay them? What? What? Would you like to be cremated, sir, or thrown to the walls and torn to pieces? I fucking knew this would happen. Hey, rule number one of being homeless, always look out for yourself. Actually, sir, that's the second rule of being homeless. Well, what's the first rule, then? It's be careful with the crab pay sandwiches because the cats walked all over them. What the hell does that mean? I don't know, but I want it carved onto my headstone. You two-timing snake. Son of a bitch. Would you like some buttons? I've had just enough of all this crap. Jeffrey, the glove. Sir, I wouldn't advise. I said the glove. That's poop in his place. You're telling me that you're in this robbery just for profit? Yes. Yarg. Well, what about all those gifts I bestowed upon you? What gifts? Those, are uh, oh, well, uh, gifts. I gave gifts to so many people, it's... I can't remember. Jeffrey, isn't that right? That's true. He gave me the flu once. Shut up, Jeffrey. 
Aha, what about those chocolate brownies I baked for thee? They tasted like a collection of dirt. How dare you? I'll have you know I use fresh soil. You know, I have to say, I'm glad to be out of those other clothes. I don't feel beige is quite my colour scheme. We don't want anyone to see us making a run for it. Hi, Jeffrey. Oh, fuck. I have a brilliant idea to make some fast cash. Since you're a spot on lookalike of Moe's bartender on The Simpsons, we'll put you on show for the public. I don't look anything like Mo. Don't be so modest. Jeffrey, kindly explain to me why you appear to be helping this frozen cabbage run away with all our stolen items. Well, you see, sir, it's, it's, well... Hang you know. on. He doesn't have a gut to tell you this, but I do. He's sick to death of you, you marvellous sloth. We're going to take all this stuff and sell it so we can make lots of money and make sweet love to some prostitutes. Here's a match, Gorilla. They both have a petrol station. Jeffrey, how could you do this to me? After all the time to save you from drowning. Twelve times! Actually, I saved you a dozen times. Don't exaggerate. I said only twelve times. All your plans were going to do was have us ending up in prison. Or in your case, a padded cell. You tell it, Jeffrey. God, where do you even exist? You expect people to know that April Fool's Day takes place in April? No shit! Fuck off, no shit guy! I can't trust him, Jeffrey. He's as crooked as I am. Do listen to me, Jeffrey. Well, now that I think about it, Velociraptor, you're pretty damn annoying too. What? When was I ever annoying? Cast your mind back to the week of our training session. Yay, another flashback! Today, we're going to learn how to bend mangoes. How is that going to help us rob a house? I've got that answer on a bit of paper here. Hurry up, Velociraptor, you're late. Sorry, summer market. Fascinating. I bought myself an antique jar. It wasn't too expensive, either. Good for you. Then before leaving, I bought some soil. My dad's rhubarb could do with fresh sprinkling. Please stop talking. They didn't promise to bring any bags or anything with me, so I had to use the jar as a container for the soil. Get to the bloody point! I have a jar of dirt. What?! Oh, come on. I only did that once. Yes, but you did it non-stop for three days. And I'm sorry for the time that I drank out of your iron brew and then pissed in it so you wouldn't notice. What? Together we're like Hardy and Wise and Morecambe and Laurel. Christ, we're like the two Marx Brothers. Four Marx Brothers. Oh well, that's half right. Sorry for lost Raptor, but we're a team. You must be mad. Can't argue with that logic. Hi there. Give me the bag. Eh, uh, how about we swap it for that gun? How about no? You drive a hard bargain. That's right, I'm a robot. Uh, I mean serial killer? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Phew, I, I was worried there, right? That's okay. Right? I was worried there. Yeah. And I'm afraid in the next hour, all of you will be dead. Over my dead body! <laughs> That's that settled. Ivy, you've killed Lupin. How can we repay you? Ivy, I'm willing to bargain with you. Let us leave alive, and we'll see to it you'll get a fair trial, and even fairer, lethal injection. No, that sounds too risky. Cutters! I failed. Well, at least you'll die in a state of normality. Now, Geoffrey, because I despise you the least, where would you like me to shoot you? About 12 centimetres over my hat. Straight in the heart it is, then. Wait! What about I Spy? What about it? We play a game of it. And if we win, you let Jeffrey and I live. But what about Velociraptor? Who? Me, you dumbass. Put a sock in it, Simon. I'm trying to deal with Ivy here. I think it's her time with the mum. You've got 30 seconds. OK, let's see. I spy. Hmm. It has to be a good one. You've got 20 seconds. 
All right, take it easy, you bitch. Oh, I mean, uh, this is it, Nigel. What would Bill from accounting do? Well, I could do that, but... Five. I spy with Four. my little eye something to get in with. Flabbergasted. What? What? Flabbergasted. You can't see flabbergasted. It is a word. You're just jealous because I thought of it first. I'm not even playing, you idiot. So you don't believe me, eh? Jeffrey? The dictionary. Look under F. F? Yes, F. You know, F. For photosynthesis. Wait a minute. This is a French dictionary? Damn it all to hell! They've gone! Do something! I've got a jar of dirt! I've got a jar of dirt! I've got a jar of dirt! Oh my god! She's killed Velociraptor! You bastard! That guy's name is Velociraptor? Well, it was before it became extinct. I get it! Shut the hell up, Nappa! Once again, running away solved all our problems. Oh dear. That's impossible. How did you... Get it for you? Well, you see... Actually, I was wondering how you acquired that pendulum t-shirt. Any last words, King Handbasket? Now, Nigel, look at the mess you've gotten yourself into, old bin. I know. Well, you reverse psychology. Did anyone tell you that you look like a million dollars? No. Well, you do. All green and crinkly. Get it? Because dollars are good. That's it. I will not stand here and be humiliated by some unclean lunatic. In fact, just for that, everyone in the village dies. Well, that isn't very nice. Of course not. I'm a fucking psychopath. Not so loud. Then what do you think the neighbours will think? Ah, you missed. Oh. Jeffrey, why don't you find bullets small enough to fit in that gun? I am very glad you asked me that. Actually, I'm going to draw the question. So she's dead. It would appear so, sir, yes. And Lupin has lost up to two? I'm afraid so. You know what this means? Yes. You and I are... You are a murderer. Yes, a rich murderer. Oh boy, rich! Jeffrey, do you know what the first thing I'm going to buy is? To be honest, I really, really don't care. Would this be a good time to apologise? Could I have a word with you, please? Take this stuff of yours as compensation. And I hope this will teach you not to fuck with me. Nice.
Nigel, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. What are you, a homo? It was dreadful.